Hi, welcome back to You Are The Answer. Remember last time we were talking about the phosphagen system and we defined that as the big block V8 of your muscle energy. Well this time we're going to talk about the anaerobic glycolytic system which is also known as the lactate system and we'll refer to this as the turbocharged V6 of your energy systems. Now the lactate system may not produce as much power as the big block V8 of the phosphagen system but it's a lot more fuel efficient since it lasts longer and it doesn't take as much time to replenish. And most strength-based athletes are going to utilize both of these systems on any given training day or during events with actually more time spent in the lactate system, so we're going to spend just a little more time talking about it. You're going to get about 30 to 45 seconds worth of power output from the lactate system, which kicks in after about the initial 10 seconds of intense exercise, which is just about when your power output starts to drop in the phosphagen system. So by about 30 seconds of training, which to give you a point of reference is just going to be about 15 to 20 box jumps or if you're lifting about 12 to 15 reps of squats or bench presses for example, in that case most of your energy is going to come from the lactate system. And if you go beyond that 45 second threshold, then the power output is going to drop again, this time by a lot as your body starts to shift over into the really low power output system, which is the aerobic energy system, which we'll talk more about later. Okay, so there's four steps to the lactate system, where there were three steps to the phosphagen system. The lactate system is a little more complex, but without getting caught in the weeds, I want to try to go into a little bit of detail so you can understand why lactate is so important if you're training at intense levels for extended periods of time. The first step in the process is muscle glycogen that's stored in the muscle is converted to glucose. And in the second step, that glucose is then converted into ATP. But half of the ATP is used for actual muscle contraction. The other half is used to refuel the process of glycolysis or more energy creation. So it's not going to give you the direct injection of ATP that you get from the phosphagen system, but it's going to last longer and it's more self-sustaining. The third step is that there's a couple of important byproducts. There's this stuff called pyruvate and then there's hydrogen ions. The more hydrogen ions that accumulate, the more acidic the muscle becomes and the more you get that muscle burn. In the last step, one pyruvate molecule or each pyruvate molecule is going to bind with two hydrogen ions forming this stuff called lactate. Okay, so now this part's important. Lactate often gets confused with lactic acid, but they're not the same. Lactic acid is created by the accumulation of those hydrogen ions that I just mentioned, which is what makes your muscles burn when you're going all out. As I'm sure most of you know, your muscles just don't function that well in an acidic environment, and this is because the enzymes that control glycolysis can't function at full speed. But lactate actually acts as a buffer to reduce the burn and keep you going because your body's constantly flushing lactate out of the muscle, which is moving the hydrogen ions out that are responsible for the muscle burn. But as intense training continues, you're eventually going to reach a point where the hydrogen builds up so fast that you can't remove enough lactate to control the burn. Then you're going to get a drop in power where you're either going to have to one, stop training, or two, reduce the intensity. So when lactate is managed through smart training, you can maintain intensity levels for a longer period of time. And another cool benefit of lactate is its ability to recycle back into pyruvate or glucose for even more energy production and acid buffering. So this system is pretty damn efficient if you train it properly. The objective with training in the lactate system is to increase your tolerance to lactate. In other words, learn to live with the burn and create adaptation. Okay, now pay attention to this part, especially if you're into the high volume training of something like CrossFit. Just as with the phosphagen system, it's going to be the use of rest periods that will determine the effectiveness of energy replenishment. So if you want the system to completely recover and clear out most of the lactate so you can keep pushing yourself, you'd want to use a work to rest ratio of 1 to 6. So a 30 second all out effort is going to be followed by 3 minutes of rest. Now that'll work for some skill work training, but it's not going to produce really great results in a CrossFit AMRAP. So when time is important, a ratio of 1 to 3 can be used, and this is going to help you to get more work done as well as condition your body to clear lactate out more quickly and also create a better adaptation to the burn. So now you're looking at about 30 seconds of work to only 90 seconds of rest, and you can always shorten your work time in order to reduce your rest periods, which really depends on your strategy for any given workout. Really advanced athletes can try what's known as lactate stacking. This is a 2 to 1 work to rest ratio that's going to cause a much bigger accumulation of lactate since the really short rest interval is not going to allow a lot of time for lactate to be cleared out of the muscle. So it's going to force you to continue training all out 
with a lot of lactate, which is really gonna increase your ability to adapt to that big muscle burn that's associated with high intensity training. However, unless you wanna use the puke bucket in every workout, I suggest you build up to this level. From a nutrition perspective, carbs become really important for the system, and that's because you need plenty of glycogen stored in the muscle in order to produce blood glucose for glycosis to happen. So you can't go into a workout like this on an empty tank, and carbs are gonna replenish glycogen quicker than any other food sources. You're just gonna to wanna to stick with starchy carbs like potatoes, yams, rice, the night before. You can also use supplements that have maltodextrin or waxy maize, and there's this stuff called D-ribose that has some pretty good anecdotal support for its ability to assist in ATP production by making glucose more readily available. Another approach would be to try to increase blood flow to the muscles, which would bring more oxygen in and more efficiently flush the lactate out of the muscles, which will increase energy levels and it'll also reduce the burn. So supplements like beta alanine, arginine, and citrulline will help support more efficient oxygen utilization and blood flow to the heart and skeletal muscles. Lastly, glutamine has some really cool recovery properties for post-training that a lot of you may already know about, but if you use a gram or two before training and during training, it's pretty effective at buffering acidity that causes the muscle burn. You can follow the link below to our website if you want to learn more about what supplements can help you get the most out of the lactate system. And we're going to talk more about these later, but for now, we just wanted to give you a good baseline for improving your strength and your stamina using the lactate system to fuel your longer, higher intensity workouts. So thanks for checking us out, and we'll see you next time.